are live all across Northwest and West Central Ohio tonight here on WOSN Ray Etzler Gymnasium in Convoy, home of the Knights at Crestview High School and a big early season matchup we've got for you tonight here on WOSN. A couple of teams expected to make some long tournament runs as the Shawnee Indians have come to Convoy to take on the Knights. So we'll get everyone alongside former Van Ward basketball coach Mark Bagley. I'm Randy Roberts. Coach, good to see you once again. It's been a long time. We uh, talked a little bit. We go, hey, we're kind of new. And I'm like, actually, we met once before back in your coaching days which seems like an eternity ago, but uh, good to have you with me tonight. Looking forward to what should be a pretty good matchup here in this one. Great seeing you, Randy, again. And we talked a lot, didn't know it, but now I figured that out. And it's going to be a great non-conference matchup tonight in Convoy and a great atmosphere. The band's right next to us, and we've got uh, two teams with high aspirations this year. And a matchup you don't see a lot of. we got a Division Four team hosting a Division Two team. If this was... The collegiate level, this wouldn't happen at all, but uh, a couple of teams that want to test each other, and they're going to get uh, a lot of that tonight as uh, we've got what should be a pretty good matchup. Let's take a look at the lineups uh, for these two squads tonight. And Coach, let's talk a little bit about the Indians of Shawnee, 17-8 and eight a year ago, lost to Napoleon in, a district, in the uh, district semifinal under head coach Mark Triplett. Played Saturday their season opener, what was kind of uh, an amended schedule, you'd say, to the Elida tip-off with Lima Central Catholic. Football's got to ruin everything for you basketball coaches, right? And LCC making their run kind of changed the schedule, a little bit of a round robin instead of the traditional opening tournament. Yeah, it was different. I did the Friday night game with Bath and Elida, and then Elida turns around and, and with three wins last year, had a huge win on Saturday night versus Shawnee. So that that was a huge uh, win uh, for them in, in a, like you said, an amended uh, tip-off classic uh, last night. So Shawnee is looking to get another week of practice in and, and they had a short preseason too with soccer mm -hmm. and some football injuries and and here we are in convoy on friday night and see one difference to the normal shawnee starting lineup we just learned about it a few minutes before the tip is uh, austin miller who had 15 points six rebounds in the opener out because of injury and keegan wilson stepping into that starting lineup for the indians tonight. yeah yeah austin is their is their number one returning player from last year a lot of experience is, has played on some really good teams, Haven't, hasn't lost many games in his career. And we're gonna find out a lot about Shawnee's depth tonight with some of their, they had a great JV team last year, a good freshman team as well. So we're gonna see some new kids tonight we, we haven't seen yet early in this season. Will McBride, another one of those players that played real well, one of those uh, letter winners. Seven letter, seven letter winners, easy for me to say. Back for each team, McBride, 13 points, eight boards. Again, Shawnee kind of let that opener get away from him, led by double digits in the third quarter before losing by point 66-65. I know you'll have your keys to the game as we get further into our pregame, and one of those things probably sticks out for you in that one, but a good chance here to get a bounce back and to get a quality win tonight. Yeah, we've talked about this early in the season, especially now that it's condensed and football has expanded, mm -hmm. that we're not going to find out how good teams are unless they're really experienced and really healthy until about mid-January. And so these are great early season non-conference games. Mm -hmm. They kind of put a barometer on where they, they stand right now. Let's talk a little bit about the Knights of Crestview and veteran head coach Doug Etzler. Went 17-6 and six last year, lost to Ottaville. Also in the district semifinals, played their season opener as well on Saturday, going to Miller City, not a place that's always the easiest place anywhere in Putnam County, not the easiest place to leave with wins. But the Knights able to go there and win by 20, 63-43. Yeah, it was a close first half in, in Crestview's experience. They've got seven key letter winners back with their – starting five and, and, and reserves as well. And I think their experience showed as they won by 20. And this is going to be a really good barometer for them tonight as well. And you talked about the seven ladder winners, those experienced players stepping up for them early on. Gavin Etzler at 18 points, Mitch Temple 15, Nathan Lickley added 10. So a lot of depth and a lot of guys with some experience expected to step up for uh, Crestview this year. Yeah, and Ren Sheets came on late, uh, midway through last year. He was a 6'6 freshman. Now he's a sophomore with lots of experience. And I look for him to have a huge impact tonight because the size difference becomes, you know, really, really evident with Miller being out for Shawnee. I look for Ren Sheets to have a big game tonight. So 
take a look at some uh, keys to the game as we get deeper into this one. And uh, coach, let's start with some keys to the game for the Shawnee Indians tonight. Yeah, number one, Randy, they've got to limit live ball turnovers. They had 23 uh, in, in the first game versus Bath. And live ball turnovers, you can't defend. Uh, those are layups, those are easy opportunities. And they got to limit those tonight. Number two, they got to box out, rebound, and run. Last week, there were a lot of loose balls watching that game. They didn't finish the rebounding possession, and that's what Shawnee has thrived on the last five-plus years is they rebound, they get out, and create easy opportunities. And then number three, one more. What does that mean? They have to pass one more. Instead of a good shot, they get a great shot. At times, they were stagnant last week and took the first shot. One more pass equals a great shot. So it's not that the coach one was, it's the five passes, just one more, one more, one more. Yeah, we're not Hoosiers here, it's just <laughs> one more. I like that you talked about the, the 23 turnovers, and uh, is, is that where the hair's gone for you? Like you had nights like that and uh, you want to go home? Absolutely. The, the turnovers are, are things that you, you really try to execute throughout practice all week long. And, and a lot of those, talking to Coach Triplin, were unforced. Um, now you throw it out of bounds, you can at least guard that. You know, dead ball turns, but when you when you have a live ball turnover that are unforced, then you can't defend that. So yeah, that that definitely makes someone like me uh, lose all their hair. How about some of the keys to the game now as we take a look at the Crestview Knights? Number one, protect the paint. I think they're really they really recognize that Shawnee likes to get out and run. So they gotta get back and transition and limit Shawnee and, and make Shawnee take that first shot instead of that extra pass shot. They got to defend every possession of this quickness and athleticism on the dribble drive. Shawnee loves to get to the hoop off the dribble drive, and they've got to keep the ball in front and be better than a man one-on-one. -on -one. And then number three is rebound, and they must defensive rebound. They do those kind of things. I think Crest will get some good shots offensively. So we have a couple of minutes here. Mark, what are you looking forward to in this one tonight? Like you mentioned it, just a good barometer game more than anything. Hey, can we do we stack up well with this team? How do we do against this team? And, you know, we're, we're two weeks into the season, and I, for you as a coach, you probably just had to like the fact that you get to see other players than your own guys every day. You know, you had you know three weeks of practice, and, and you get, you know, a game in, and, and it's probably you probably enjoy the fact that you're getting to see other teams and not just your same guys day in, day out. Yeah, and for every team in Northwest Ohio, the football playoffs does affect everybody. Even if your team doesn't make it, mm -hmm. you may face somebody that does make it. Uh, and so you lose a week of games, and, and you're right. Practice becomes monotonous, so it's good to play somebody else. See where you're at, watch the film, and then get better. Looking forward to what should be a good one. We're live tonight at WOSN at Shawnee Crestview next. Getting ready uh, for the National Anthem here at uh, Crestview. Randy Roberts, Mark Bagley with you here as uh, we inch ever so closely to that opening tip as the uh, flag lowers. It's kind of the point where you just, you kind of want to get the game going at this point, right? You just kind of sit in that bench and flag lowers and it kind of, you know, it kind of feels like it takes forever and you got to wait for the band and it's kind of, we get it just, you just want to throw the ball up, right? Everybody's nervous right now, and it seems like they introduced everybody, including the people in the crowd at this time, and it's almost like you need another warm-up throughout this process. But this gym, I think, Randy, is hot enough that they're pretty loose. Yeah, looking forward, and uh, pretty full as well. Big crowd here as uh, getting excited for this one. And we'll turn things over now to the uh, Crestview pep band for the playing of our national anthem. Tonight's contest between the Blamer Shawnee Indians and your Crestview Knights. The Crestview Athletic Department extends to each of you a cordial welcome to this evening's game. As we honor America and the many soldiers past and present who protect our freedoms, will you please stand for the playing of our national anthem by the Crestview Pet Band under the direction of Brett Lackman.
go through the introductions of the starting lineups. It'll give us the opportunity to uh, run down those uh, lineups for you once again for the visiting uh, Shawnee Indians. Their starting lineup, Will McBride, as you see it there on your screen, Toby Freeberger, Keegan Wilson in, Nick Passion, uh, Brady Gabes for Crestview, Gavin Etzler, Mitch Temple, Carson Hunter, Nate Lickley, and Ren Sheets. Welcome the officials. We are getting ready to go. Great to be with everyone here live on this Friday night. See the announcements for uh, Lima Shawnee there. Sharp looking red uniforms, the black numerals, white trim, almost as good as Crestview's red, white, and blue. Of course, the uh, state rule with the white uniforms. So, little thing about me, I don't share this with a lot of people. My alma mater, the reason for the white uniforms. And now, the would that be? Evergreen High School. So, we played Fayette on a Saturday night non-league. And this was the rule back when it was just the light-colored home, dark-colored away. So, Fayette wore white at home, yellow on the road. Evergreen wore yellow at home, green on away. So, they showed up two teams in yellow uniforms. And so the state fixed that. Good, nah. We, we need the we need the difference. So little factoid to pass along to everyone tonight. Yeah, and even the new uniforms they're making now, Randy. They're making the shorts smaller so that 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 kids don't roll as much. That that was always one of my pet peeves. That, so I got smaller shorts um, because I think a lot of the new shorts have some really neat trim around them as well. Mm -hmm. they, they get lost in the roll. They do. And that's that's all part of it now. You, it's it's just not it's the piping and the different colors and you know it's it's not just the solid color with a color number and, and they're all they're all different. So they are the numbers now are sublimated, which they're they're built right into the uniform. It's mm -hmm. So much different uh, than the past, but there there are a lot of neat uniforms and uh, they're wearing Under Armour tonight. I see both teams. So we appreciate Oregon and Nike for the ones that explain you know. And I suppose Maryland and, and Under Armour for the explosion of the the unis as well. Throw this one in the air. We are underway here from Etzler Gymnasium. Shawnee wins the tip. Freiberger bring this one into the front court. It's like man to man opening up here for the Knights. And Shawnee's going a lot of ball ball screen action early. Inside pass knocked away, an early turnover. Out trying to lead the break. That one thrown a little too far ahead of Lickley, and that one will be thrown away. So matching turnovers, first 22 seconds of the contest. Yeah, and Freiberger's going to be a huge key for Shawnee tonight. He's got a lot of experience as well. He's played three years varsity. He's going to be key for him. They need him scoring. Ball comes over to the wing for Wilson, trying to find something inside. Comes out top of the key, McBride. He'll get rid of it again. Right now, just playing around the perimeter and a heads up play. Poking away, there's Temple, and he'll finish with a layup in the other end. Opening night, uh, opening bucket of the night, excuse me, to Mitch Temple off the steal. Pressure continues, and it's going to be another turnover as Shawnee is going to be called for the backcourt violation. And Randy, here you can see denial steal by Temple. Great, the correct hand in the passing line. Here's a live ball turn turnover example. It leads to possessions you can't defend. At least over and back you can defend it in half court. Three early turnovers for Shawnee. The entry pass inside going to Sheets now with a kick out. There's the extra pass. 
into the hands of Hunter. Runner in the lane, doesn't go. Sheets just mistimed his jump, going for the rebound. Shawnee able to come away with it. There's a nice center pass under the basket. Ball's then tipped away. Straight up in the air, now it's gonna head out of bounds. Last touched, official save by McBride. And Shawnee will turn it over once again. An early substitution. As it looks like Beckett Berkey will check in. And that's assistant coaches Nick Berkey's uh, freshman son. So getting some early action here. Minute 30 into the game. Each team trying to learn the rotations early part of the season. Said this game just the second of the year for each squad. It's a pull up jumper from the elbow. Good look, a little too strong. This bangs off the opposite side of the backboard. Offensive rebound. Pulled down on the corner. Now thrown for, our, I believe that's that Sheets inside. A good look, and the ball's going to go in. As Ren Sheets able to corral a pass inside, put it up and in. And his size made a difference there. He was able to get that loose ball and put it up and in. Nice move by Sheets. And Sheets now having to step up and guard on the perimeter. Shawnee trying to find something. And we'll get a foul, and a travel is going to be the call on the whistle. As it looks like, we'll take a look at the replay here. See the little shuffle. Early timeout for Shawnees. We see the replay of the travel. And that was a good timeout by Coach Triplett. Shawnee is trying really hard right now to make the right play, but they're going a little fast. They got some inexperienced guys, and, and you want to play fast but not in a hurry, and right now they're, they're in a hurry. That's always got to drive players nuts because coaches say that. Oh, I'm going as fast as I can. No. Her, with, with a purpose, though. Yeah, and this time of the year, defense is always ahead of the offense. Mm -hmm. It just is, and, and Shawnee's just a little off right now. The best player is out, um, and, and they're just trying to figure out the rotations and, and who's going to be the next guy to step up, but you can't do it by yourself. You have to do it together. So you mean to tell me, like, first day of practice, you're not shooting 100% from the floor? No. I'm hoping at the end of the year you shoot 50%. That's a really <laughs> good percentage. <laughs> it's a quick 30-second timeout taken by the Indians. Crestview with a basketball, leading this one by four. Good luck inside. And the foul is going to send Mitch Temple to the free throw line. That was a really good screen and slip by Temple. Uh, he, he set a screen and slipped right to the ball and had a nice shot fake. He's got two free throws coming up. Fouls on Keegan Wilson. That's going to be his first. So here's Temple with two points tonight, shooting two free throws. He'll knock down the first. All nights here early on, 5 nothing. you see there. On our scoreboard tonight, brought to you by Cary Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. Temple will get both free throws. He's the only one now in multiple points. He's got four. As the Indians trying to go inside. There's the inside-out kick over to Wilson. Wilson will get rid of the basketball. Back top of the key, Berkey will swing it around to the right side. And Crestview is playing solid man-to-man -man defense right now. They're keeping everything in front of them, making Shawnee take tough shots. Or, or no shots at all. A wraparound pass is deflected away and stolen. Good job by Temple using that offhand to protect the basketball. Entry pass inside. Sheets, he'll lose the handle. He's double teamed. Ball's loose on the floor. A little one-handed runner in the lane is no good. A nice job skying for the rebound. Was well, passion. And Shawnee so far has yet to shoot a shot. Now they're gonna get one there, it's a three. That one's off the mark, no good. On cue, coach. Stepping into one on the other end of the floor. Will be Temple. It's no good, but we'll count the putback. And a big play as we take a look at the replay. Great job by Lickland on the backside. He sees in the corner. He comes all the way in. There's no box out. The catch, the finish, and what he did there is keep his shoulders squared, Randy, and laid it off the glass to get the end one on opportunity. So wholesale substitutions for the uh, Indians. As Dominic Lynch, one of those players checking in, I believe we also saw a Boston Barker, number two senior guard coming in as the free throw is good as well. And as bad as it is, Randy, about four minutes into this game, it's still only nine nothing. Shawnee's gotta get their composure back and, and get good looks here. Lickley with a good three-point play. 
As Mark said, extends that lead 9-0 here early on. We played about three and a half minutes so far. A lot of movement right now all around the perimeter for Sean Ears. Baseline look, that one's going to be taken away. Ball's tipped, great job of the hustle to try to keep that inbounds. And on the scramble, it's out of bounds, but I believe we're going to have a foul called in the scrum. So there's, there's a lot of deflection there, but no stats. A foul in Crestview. Their hands, Randy, have been really active early on. They're in the passing lanes. They're in the driving lanes. A lot of tips and deflections. So he did have a substitution come in as a part of that as uh, Nasir Easterling, number 35, will check in. There's a shot put up, but it's no good. One and done as the rebound comes out to the Knights. Here's the entry pass inside. Esterling just going to back down his defender at just nothing but strength, and he's able to put that up and in. And they, they have a huge advantage with size. Again, with Miller out, and he, he just backed him in, and he's another experienced player off the bench for Crestview. Oh, what an opening uh, spurt here for Crestview. They've got the first 11 of the night. Shawnee, you can see them trying to find something inside. They just had no success. Swinging it now side to side. Ball goes into the corner. They'll come back out. Here's one launch. That's no good. Offensive rebound, no good. Put back too strong. And the rebound's pulled down by Lickley. Here's Etzler. They'll give into the corner. Three ball is going to be up no good. Another offensive rebound. Put back doesn't go. The effort there is then knocked out of bounds. Officials say that's going to belong to Shawnee as we see four new fresh bodies come in. So see just a little too strong. That one off the window. And then you saw one giant hand. I believe that was Easterling. Tried to corral it. Kind of the, the one motion while I'm in the air. Put it back up towards the hoop. Just a little too strong. Yeah. And... and uh for Shawnee's credit right now, they're getting some good looks finally. Their motion offense, their continuity offense, is starting to work, but they just haven't been able to make anything right now. So Brady Gabe's with it. You know, skip pass comes over the top. Step back three doesn't go. Rebounds pulled down. And now Crestview trying to move in transition. Shots up no good by Carson Hunter. And the ball's then out of bounds. As we see Hunter's attempt here. And that's kind of an early season play right there. Just, just a little sloppy on both ways. And uh, that's four offensive rebounds for Crestview. Three ball off the inbound is going to be up and good. And Nate's a really good set shooter. And he got his feet set on the out-of-bounds play and hit a three. Tonight's three points uh, shot is the sponsor, I should say, is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Trying to match one on the other end. That one's going to be no good. And it's Lickley with a rebound. He'll push it into the front court for the Knights. Now up 14-0. Still two minutes left to go in our opening quarter. It's a good call, the entry pass. He's still in with it again. Another good turnaround lays it off the rim and in. Crestview put on a clinic there. Caught the ball in the corner. Ball fake, bounce pass, wrap around. Good patience inside, good finish. All Crestview here early on. Shawnee trying to find something. Oh, trying to get a little help with their offense. It's a disheartening night. You've had some shots that just don't go. It's a drive a trip as... We'll get a foul called here on Crestview. Yeah, and they've only taken seven shots because of the turnovers, but uh, their last few trips have been better looks. They just can't make anything right now. And it's danger zone time now, Randy. You know, 9 nothing's one thing, but 16-0, mm -hmm. it really, the confidence level early on in the season, new players, it becomes tough. And Crestview's very experienced. If anything else, you just want to get that goose egg off the scoreboard before the clock hits zero, right? Another turnover. And in transition, Crestview might have gotten away with a the travel there. So the look inside, the kick out. Good ball movement by the Knights here early on. Off the screen, set up, good luck. Three ball hits off the heel of the iron, no good by Hunter. And now it's Shawnee in transition. There's a look inside, doesn't go. Berkey had the shot he wanted, couldn't get it to fall. 
And Crestview's player and ball movement is outstanding right now. They're really doing a good job making the extra pass. Their cuts are hard. They're crisp. It's been a great first quarter for Crestview here. It's a bouncing ball. That one's going to be taken away. Wilson with the steal. He'll finish on the other end. And I say that, and they have a turnover for a layup. Great play by Shawnee to get on the board there. Yeah, first points of the night late in our opening quarter. You see there, Carey Insurance scoreboard 16-2. Got to believe Crestview will play for the final shot of the quarter. So work it around. Good opportunity. Get a little deep in their bench. Here's a quick three. As Carson Honor will take that one. Another offensive rebound pulled down. Turn around at the horn. I don't think was going to count anyways. And that's how our first quarter will end. All Crestview after eight minutes of action, 16 two nights. We'll take a break here at WOSN. Sixteen to our score after one quarter of action. Crestview with the early lead over Shawnee. Great start for the Knights. And uh, Mark, I know we're kind of eight minutes in. What's uh, something's kind of stuck out to you so far? Well, I think first of all, seven turnovers by Shawnee and only two by Crestview. And then Crestview's ball movement right there is a great example. And easy shots have been a key. And what a pass, and it leads to the bucket as Connor Sheets able to score. And, and for Shawnee, just their confidence level has been shaken. Plays like that, trying to do things by themselves. And Crestview out for a live ball turnover. There's another one, but good block. Nice hustle to get back on defense. And the second block, but it goes right back into the hands of Sheets. So they had to knock it back into his hand twice, and he's able to finish for points. Give credit, I believe that was Berkey, number 23, trying to fight in there. A couple of blocks, just unable to find a teammate. A look inside, that one's going to go off the knee of the cutter, Gabers, and then turn another turnover for Shawnee. And, and Shawnee's playing a lot of young kids right now, and and, they're, and Coach Triple's just going, they, he just wants them to play hard right now because their experience is out or, or, or banged up, and so therefore he's looking for effort. Yeah, trying to find someone, you know, second game of the year, just trying to, like you said, kind of build your rotation at this point and see who are who are guys you can count on when the games matter a little bit more late in the year. And the game is just slower for Crestview right now. You can see that. They're just being patient. Plays like that, uh, effort plays. Turnaround uh, shot doesn't go. Here's the Indians in transition. Ball's going to be stripped away. And Passion tried to come up with it. Three balls no good. And now we'll get a foul on the rebound on the backside. As Gabers came away with the rebound, we'll take a look at the replay here. See the jumper. Gabers coming in, grabs the rebound, and then is fouled. Crestview foul on Connor Sheets. That's going to be his first. I always say those backside rebounds are what wins tournament games late in the year. And, and those are backside wars in the Northwest Conference of WBL. And you have to win those battles defensively. So another Mets heating and cooling three-pointer off the mark, no good. Another entry pass inside. Good recognition of the triple team. Leads to the open shot and hitting the Mets. Heating and cooling three-pointer, Carson Hunter, his first bucket of the night. And Sheets was triple team there, and he made a great decision to look opposite. Wide open shot, nice three. Puts this lead at 21. Three minutes gone by, quarter number two is a good dribble drive, and looks like Whistles will have a foul down on the low block. And that's one of our keys of the game for Crestview. They wanted to stop the dribble drive, but this possession, they didn't do it. And that equals two free throws here for Shawnee. It's will McBride will get his way to the free throw line. First one, nothing but net. You'd expect that out of uh, one of those players with experience back for the Indians. Yeah, and he, he needs to step up for him tonight, too. He had 13 last week, and he needs to have a big game. Uh, again, not always in points. Everybody talks about points, but just in leadership and helping the young guys figure out what their roles may be. Yeah, he's able to get both of them uh, pretty easily. So it becomes the second player to score for the Indians, and now 23-4 here. Seeing our carry insurance scoreboard, still 5.50 left to go before halftime. That, that hustle play. 
Freiberger with the steal, the dish, and the bucket goes to Nick Passion. And that's what Shawnee's doing right now. They're just trying to speed up Crestview and get some live ball turnovers. And right now, Randy, their goal will be to get it to 10 to 12 at halftime. That puts them back in the game, and they got it at 17 right now. And we'll get a whistle in the tie-up. Possession arrow favors Shawnee, so they'll force the turnover. Let's take a look at the replay right here. Oh, sorry, that is the steal, and then the finish on the other end. A little cradle there, may have been an extra step, but the refs didn't see it, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's the Euro step. Shawnee trying to fight back into this one. There's no magic 15 point bucket. You'll have to kind of work your way from double digits down. There's one inside, it's gonna be taken away. It's Crestview Old Strong nearly matched the turnover and then there's no call at first. That was a little odd play. So Isaac Klein, you'll see number four. He knows he's out of bounds and he's waiting for a whistle that never came. Yeah, and it, it came late. Uh, and that's three straight turnovers for Crestview. They've kind of got sloppy here. It came easy in the first quarter, and now it's got a little more difficult. Shawnee's really competing right now. Another dribble drive. Doesn't go. Klein comes away with a rebound for Crestview. Thank you for Klein on that sideline play. Don't you keep running like you Oh, I was in bounds the entire time. Yeah, because well, as soon as he started tiptoeing, the ref saw it. Step back three is going to be up and good. Another Max heating and cooling three-pointer time. Mitch Temple with it. And Temple has really uh, has improved and gotten better each year, and he really has a lot more confidence in his shot. That, that was a nice move there. So Temple down with seven points for the Knights. They lead this one by 20. Trying to answer in the other end. And a good bucket there. Will McBride with a bucket. And they've, they've really gone to trapping and just trying to make an ugly game. It, it already has been ugly for them anyway, so they, they need to make it more ugly as they go. And now an offensive foul will be called. Temple is going to pick up the personal. And, and all of a sudden, they've turned them over four times this quarter. And again, it's still 17, but they're competing now, Randy. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's all Coach Triple could ask for. And I, I know that Coach Jessler is a little frustrated too by... Cressy's trying to do things by themselves right now. We've reached the halfway point already. A very fast moving first half. Here from Crestview. It's McBride in the corner trying to get rid of the basketball. Good entry pass. Turn around. Nice use of the pivot foot. Looked like a clean block from behind, but Ren Sheets is going to be called for the foul. I think the block was probably clean up top, but at the end of the play, and that, that's where it happened with some body action on the foul. Sheets guilty of his first, sixth of the half. It's the next personal foul will put Shawnee into the bonus for the final 336 of half number one. Also sends Freiberger to the free throw line where he knocks down his first. And this is when you try to get back in the game, Randy, when the clock stop, you're shooting mm -hmm. free throws, set your press up, and, and get into what defense you want to get into. And he missed the free throw. Crestview able to break. Little Shawnee pressure there is. Good look inside. Kick out to the double team, leads to the three. It's up and good. It's Gavin Etzler, it's his first points of the night. Once again, another Matt's heating and cooling three-pointer. And there's a tip pass. Good look is left all alone under the bucket was Beckett Berkey. And, and so many players try to do that in today's game. They make that great pass. That's, again, ball fake, bounce pass. That's a layup if you do that. And it's kind of a lost start. There's a bounce pass right there to finish. And how about the layup that goes with it? So Dominic Lynch. Into the scoring column for the Indians. Now 29-12. Problem for Shawnee is you're kind of matching points. You're not, you are getting stops, but you're not scoring off the stops. You're waiting till Crestview scores before you score. It's another one inside. Tough shot in traffic is no good. And it's Gabers with a rebound, brings the ball into the front court. 
There's the extra pass, Randy, right there. Didn't make it, but that's what they wanted, the extra pass. Good look, still a fight for the rebound. It ends up loose out of bounds, so it'll stay with Shawnee. And just about every time there's been a stoppage of action, someone's gotten up. This time it's Freiberger checks back in to the Indian lineup. Yeah, early on, trying to get your legs. The lungs are burning a little bit. The gym's really hot tonight as well. Lots of subs for both teams tonight. But that was a good effort play by Shawnee again to get another possession to mm -hmm. try to cut into that lead. Right now trying to, like Mark said, if anything else, kind of make this single digits before halftime. There's a foul called top of the key, and we're going to see three free throws coming here. And again, that, you talk about that. That's the way to get back in the games, the, to, to score when the clock is stopped. And I know it's a big margin, but they have a chance to cut this, you know, to 14 right now. And that, I said the goal to 10 to 12, it, mm -hmm. it, that, that's doable here, Randy. First free throw from Will McBride is going to be good. So McBride now with uh, six points. Get a couple of more attempts here. Second one on its way. That one is good. Just a little oh, muscle memory for everyone. Oh, it's two shots, and then they're getting ready to inbound the basketball. Officials step in, let them know that it is three. Yeah. And those are things that happen early season. You, you just hope the, the team that shoots the basketball doesn't take the ball out of bounds. You know, those kind of things have happened before early season. It seen crazier things. Made and all three. Very calmly as well. Like Mark had mentioned, one of those leaders this year expected to uh, carry the Shawnee team. Again, without the services of Austin Miller, who led them 15.6 rebounds in their uh, one-point loss in their opener. Now, foul called in the other end. This one will go on uh, Dominic Lynch. And that's only three team fouls on Sha Shawnee, and, and Crestview has seven. So again, uh, Shawnee's getting back in the game here a little bit by, shoot by making free throws, and they're in the bonus right now. See what they can do in the final two minutes of the half. It's a big two minutes for both teams here to finish out. Pull up jumper, that was gonna be partially deflected. Shawnee trying to get the run out. Passion had the, the uh, block and then got the leak out, was looking for the pass, didn't quite go his way, but at any rate, Indians get the stop and they've got the ball down 14. As we near the minute and a half mark of our opening half. McBride thought about the step back three. Instead, it gets rid of the basketball. Over to Freiberger. Freiberger trying to go one on one. Gets a screen. Now he'll get the kick out. Three ball from the corner is up and good. And Randy, that's one of the keys that Coach Triple talked about. Yeah. Drive the lane and, and penetrate and pitch. And they did that. And here we are. Pashon hits the uh, Matt's heating and cooling three and off the turnover. Shawnee able to convert once again as Beckett Burkle. As Berkey will get it. Now, all of a sudden, just a nine point lead for the Knights. Three ball from the corner is up and good. Big answer out of the Knights as Nate Lickley hits a huge. Matt's heating and cooling three. That was big, and it was maybe one of those you say no, no, good shot, because they're on the ropes a little bit there, and cut to nine, but that was a great shot. Turn around the low block, and the blocking call is called. Everyone waited in anticipation as you heard the whistle, and then waited for the call as we see. What does Coach see in the replay here? I think that was the right call. I think what, what happens on those kind of calls is it was delayed, but I think you would want to think about it. He was already leaning back. He wasn't quite square. What I'm happy about is they called a foul. A lot of times they don't call anything and people are falling down. That's when players and coaches get frustrated. So they called something. I thought it was the right call. So Will McBride will head to the free throw line here, 34.9 seconds to play before we get to halftime. Carson Hunter guilty of the foul as McBride, as he has so far all night, hits the front end of the one and one. I think that's seven for eight for the line uh, so far for Shawnee and it's kept them hanging around here with the clock stopped. And, and here we are down to 10 point game after being down 21 at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, they've really, their press has bothered Crestview here. They've got, they got seven turnovers. And nearly had another one there. So go inside, there's the ball into the corner. 
Another three, this time does it go, hits the rim twice, everyone up in the air. And now the clear out under the basket is gonna be called as McBride's gonna pick up, I believe his first foul, but with a handful to give, not a terrible situation for Shawnee. And that was a little bit of a quick shot for Cresty with 20 seconds to go. I think they want to play for the last possession unless they can shoot a layup here off the inbounds play, like that. It's exactly what they'll do, leaning into it. A good look, Carson Hunter able to hit the bucket. Now he'll have a chance to finish off the three-point play. And that was really good execution there by Crestview. Foul is on Dominic Lynch. That is going to be his second. Crestview have the opportunity not only to get another point, but a chance to set up a defense for what could be a potential final shot of the half. Free throw on its way and good. It's Carson Hunter now with six points. Pushes that lead back to 13. You look inside, little floater. The finger roll out of McBride. We'll score it. We'll see what Crestview can do here. Trying to get one more shot off. It looks like they'll get it. No good as the horn sounds. And that's how we've reached the half. What uh, looked like a route has turned in to a very competitive game. Halftime score, 35-24 Crestview. We'll take a break. You're watching High School Basketball live on WOSN. So once again, 35-24, Crestview with the lead over Shawnee as we inch closer to the start of the second half here from a very loud and packed Ray Etzler Gymnasium in Crestview. So Mark, what are you looking forward to as we get ready for the uh, second half here? Well, you said it. Northwest Ohio has great atmospheres and great gyms, and this is one of those right here. And so I'm looking for best for you to, to, to go back to what they, 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 they did early on. Move the ball, get the ball inside and finish. And then for Shawnee to keep on playing that, they, they really went to a frenetic style where they just really pressured the ball and doubled it. Their effort was really good in the second quarter and late uh, and, and, and continue to chip away. And I think for Shawnee, their goal would be to get it down to five or six out of the fourth and then anything happens when you, when you get the ball, you know, the, the score down to a one or two possession game. Just under a minute left to go here. We're going to give give props to the uh, Crestview student section as uh, it's uh, pretty evident it's a jersey night. And I have to admit, I like the mix of jerseys. We have the prerequisite Ohio State unis that, that are always prevalent. But I saw Jimmy Garoppolo. I believe I saw an Atlanta Hawks jersey in there somewhere. It's a little bit of everything. So not just the, the normal teams making an appearance. Yeah, and student bodies in Northwest Ohio are great. They, they really have their own themes each night and mm -hmm. really try to get in the game and create another atmosphere because it's not like this everywhere um, throughout Ohio. The, a lot of times there's a million things to do on a Friday or Saturday night, and they don't have this kind of support, but it's, it's good to see this kind of support. It's Crestview already under the floor, so uh, Coach Etzler not having a lot to say. To give, uh, I know you talked about it before we started, Crestview, with the uh, breaking out the Blazers with the uh, the school crest early in the season. Yeah, Doug Etzler, uh, his dad did that way back when, many years ago, and, and uh, I think the COVID casual is out for Crestview. They, they're putting the Blazers on. <laughs> uh, and there's one thing that's kind of stuck around is the uh, – the quarter zip is everyone's friend. There's a look inside, and a right on cue going inside. Ren Sheets able to get from the low block. And that's what we talked about. They, they made a concerted effort to get the ball on him. There's no matchup that Shawnee has for him unless you double him. So the Indians trying to drive to the basket. There's a baseline. That one's going to be blocked. An offensive foul called on top of it. So not enough that the ball went out of bounds. But we're going to get a player control foul as well. And that's the one rule. I know we talk about shot clock. I don't want to dive into too many things tonight, but I wish they'd put an arc. That would be a cheap way to fix the, the charge arc because that was a good play by Nate, but he was under the basket. And, and that, I just think it gives the referees some kind of 
thing to see blocker charge on that. Hey, you got a microphone tonight. You, you've got all the, all the power you want. You can talk about anything you want to talk about. Go we'll look inside. That one doesn't go. Nice job sticking with it. Offensive for, put back is no good. Trying to get a third opportunity. Ends up with a baseline jumper that doesn't go. And Crestview, three good looks at the bucket. Can't get any of them. Shawnee able to come away with it. One poked away, but it's saved. Gabers will go inside. That one doesn't fall. And now Will McBride knocks the ball away from Crestview, but it'll stay night basketball. And I would call that both of those last two possessions were early season misses. That Crestview had another great look with Sheets and several shots, missed it. Shawnee made a great cut, missed the layup. Those are kind of things you get bumped a little bit early in the season. You, you don't make those, but as time goes on, you start to finish those kind of plays. It's 37-24 on our Carry Insurance scoreboard. Tonight's scoreboard sponsors Carry Insurance and Grover Hill, probably investing in our youth programs and our communities. Three-pointer is going to be up and good as well. That was a great possession, Randy. The ball went inside the sheets. There were three extra passes. Wide open three. And they're back up by 16. Tonight's three-point sponsors, Matt's Heating and Cooling, is your home in the energy efficient zone. Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com. Schedule your free estimate. Great move by Freiburger to get in the lane. Shawnee can't get back into this one, though, trading two for three. That's what they've done so far. Another three on the other end is going to be up and good. This time it is Lickley, his third triple of the night. Another Matt's Heating and Cooling three-pointer. And that ball right now, Randy, is going side, middle, side, and it's hard for defense to recover, and they're shooting the ball really well right now. Good foul. As Ren Sheets trying to be active defensively. I think Sheets right here had, had thoughts of maybe a dunk on this. He got a little aggressive on the denial of steal, and he was about one step away from getting it. You see, see his eyes kind of light up. He saw that pass come top of the key. He'll pick up his second foul here. Already down 545 and counting, left to go third quarter. McBride into a triple team, spins out of it, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play. That was a really good individual move. You'll see this, a violent drive to the middle, uh, maybe a little hand there, but then got around and, and then got hit and finished it for an and one opportunity. I was going to go, and Gavin Etzler picked up his third. Etzler kind of wondering what he did to draw the foul there. I don't think either coach is really happy right now with how, how, how the whistle is being blown, but again, those are parts of, of the game that you can't control. Early season for the officials as well. Absolutely. 43-29, good transition. It's gonna lead to the three, that went a little too strong. That was a great backside box out right there by Shawnee. And another offensive foul, Freiburger gonna be called. Going back to the one of the other end, Lickley's, we're going to take a look here at the uh, charge. And there, the reason why I think that charge was called, he led with his right hand. And, and again, he may have still been moving, but when you leave with your arm, they're, they're going to call that most times. Trap in the corner off the inbound. Crestview able to break that. Good look into the corner, step back, another three ball. That one in and out. And now we'll get a push coming in transition. And, and Crestview's ball move, they missed that three there, has been outstanding here to start the third quarter. Shawnee foul on, or I'm sorry, that is a Crestview foul. Carson Hunter has his second. McBride trying to go baseline. Get rid of the basketball, and now we'll have a turnover. As Berkey's gonna step on the end line. And the turnovers are starting to pile up here. That's three more here in the third quarter, and that's how you can't get back in the game if you don't even get a shot off. See that trap once again out of Shawnee. Now back out of it into the half court once Crestview's able to break it. I expect that Crestview to get the ball inside the sheets here for inside action. Little X screen, he's got him. Had the positioning, didn't get the basketball. Trying to get back in position. Now it's kind of the low block of the opposite side for number 33. There's one poked away. 
Shawnee able to force the steal and a finish with a layup on the other end as Keegan Wilson able to get the bucket. And that's where Shawnee's at their best. The live ball turnover, Crestview couldn't defend that and a nice play and layup. 43-31, nice job working the sideline to stay in bounds. There's Sheets trying to finish. Crestview coaches went a goaltending. Someone's hand got up into the net. Entry pass, gonna be knocked away. It's another turnover. This one into the corner and that one is gonna be saved. So, traded turnovers. And, and the good, bad, and ugly of early season basketball is happening right now. If we had the, some circus music, we could queue it up. Uh, both teams turning it over. The wing jumper, no good. That one hits the top of the backboard. We'll play on here. Already crossed the halfway point of quarter number three. They, they can get sheets the ball anytime right now in, inside. And that's exactly what they do, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play. They didn't have great ball pressure. If you watch this, there's not much ball pressure. And when you have sight and vision to lob it up, they're not going to stop 6-6 inside with the backside help. Keegan Wilson guilty of the foul. It's his second, team's third. Sheets, who has six points, will now have a chance at a three-point play. And he really makes things tough for defenses because if you do help and double, then he's a really good passer, can see over the top. We've seen him tonight help break the press. We've seen, we've seen him finish inside and also pass out of that. So he's going to be a real, real big key for them this year in, in trying to compete and win the Northwest Conference. Talked about it in our pregame. Both these teams, big aspirations this year. Crestview, of a 17 and 6 year a year ago. Shawnee at 17 and 8. Ball knocked free, but the Indians will keep it. They're trying to get inside. Just big denial as uh, Crestview switch a little bit. Looks like more of a 2 3 here. And a nice job defensively as Mitch Temple comes up with a basketball. Temple down with a three. That one off the front of the rib, no good. The rebound's pulled down by Shawnee. And Crestview's half-court defense has been solid. It's been the transition times. It hasn't been as much. And we'll get a whistle, and we're going to have a foul inside on the dribble drive. So Mitch Temple's going to pick up foul number two. Knights lead this one by 15 with under three to go in our third quarter. And now the officials noticed a little perspiration on the floor. They'll ask for that to get cleaned up. Good chance for a break right now. Uh, again, it is very hot here, and, and there's been a lot of subbing tonight by both teams. Entry pass inside, no one picked up. Burkill, who's able to score. Yeah, block to block screen there, Randy, and there was no communication, and, and he was wide open on the backside. Here's a 2-1-2 two -on, -two on the other end, a little contact offensive foul is gonna be the call as Mitch Temple's picked up his third foul. You know, after that early 18-2 lead or whatever, it's been kind of a game of runs back and forth. Been. I mean, it, I know it's 13 right now, but really Shawnee is, has never quit, has always battled to get back into it, and made some hustle plays here in the third as well. There's McBride all the way to the bucket, able to get the layup. And we're kind of right back where we started in the third quarter. It's back to 11 after Crestview, you know, blew that lead back up again. So that lead got as big as a 21, a nice bucket on the other end. Nasir Easterling now with six. And we're just going to go back and forth. But Berkey now with six as he scores on the other end. Ball's knocked away from Temple. We're going to get a whistle, and I think a foul is going to be called in the corner. Yeah, and Shawnee has to live with this tonight with, with someone giving up easy baskets because their only chance is to make Crestview play really fast. Um, and not get the ball inside and, and have them turn it over. And, and that's their only way to, to win tonight. It's number two for uh, Shawnee, Boston Barker guilty of the foul. That's going to be his first. Pull up jumper from the elbow. Gets a little home cooking off the front of the iron and in. A nice individual mid-range mid shot there by Temple. 
He's got four points, he extends that lead. Back to 13 here, the minute and a half to go, quarter number three. It's McBride, he'll let fly long distance, can't get it to go. Temple comes away with a rebound. Temple doesn't want to take on the double team, so he'll find a teammate. Points where it looks like Crestview wants to play slower, but it just doesn't look like it's in their style. No, as deep as they've gone tonight, they've played a lot of players. I think they want to play quick. And they've run the clock down under a minute to go here in the third. Temple falling away a little bit, doesn't go, comes up with his own miss. He'll get rid of the basketball. It's going to be thrown away. Officials are going to confer as this one is going to be last touched on the deflection by Shawnee. It's going to allow Freiberger to check back into the lineup for the Indians. Yeah, McBride is really tired right now. And Coach Triple's going to try to give him a little break here to finish the third and make, make more one more run at it. And McBride was 17 of the 37 for the Indians so far, but they're down double digits. That one nearly poked away. Barker tried to sell it to the official that he knocked that off the leg of Crestview and out of bounds, but no one in stripes is buying it. Knights will inbound and run a little bit more time off this clock, down to 35 seconds to go in the quarter. The entry pass, one to travel. Instead, they'll go for the bats, heating and cooling three. That one's no good. Offensive rebound. Put back, does go. Ball's loose on the floor. It's out of bounds. And now it looks like Shawnee's going to come away with it. Connor Sheets had the looky one. It doesn't get it to fall. The scoreboards go out momentarily, but it looks like everything is back up and running. McBride back in. They got a chance here to cut it to 10 or 11 here at the end of the third, and that's still doable. It's not out of reach. Uh, quick shot by Crestview there. So with uh, the Indians going on offense for the final possession, the reason for McBride back under the floor is it looks like they'll play for the final shot of the quarter. High ball screen. Got a good look. He'll drive, had it poked away. Good steal as Connor Sheets Trying to go all the way, Temple with a runner, does it go, as that'll be the final play of our third quarter. So Crestview hanging on to a double digit lead. It's 50-37 as we head to the fourth. You're watching High School Basketball Live on WOSN. Randy Roberts, Mark Bagley back with you here at Crestview. Ready for quarter number four, 50 37. Homestanding Knights with the lead. As, as Shawnee, you've mentioned it a couple of times, just that bad opening stretch cost them here tonight. And they've uh, made a run at it, got it down to single digits. And they're unable to come, climb all the way back. Yeah, Randy, they had a bad start to the third, too. And both times they've been able to claw back into this thing. Trying to grow a little dribble. Dribble drive motion ball screen right now to get movement, create switches. It's 13 points right now. We've seen teams come back from more in the fourth. It's going to start with a big Matt Heating and Cooling three-pointer from the top of the key. And he's a freshman, and he can shoot the ball. That was a nice shot. And Berkey with nine. And a big answer on the other end. Talk about young man that can shoot the basketball. Gavin Etzler, his third triple of the evening. Yep, Gavin, Gavin is Doug's son. And, and playing for dad is hard at times. But that was a nice shot to, to answer Shawnee's three. Again, tonight's three-pointers is sponsored by Matt Hegan Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone. Call Matt Hegan Cooling go to, or call, go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Nick Passion answers the three on the other end. And now seven minutes to go. You see there on our carry insurance scoreboard, just a 10-point lead for the Knights. Yeah, and Shawnee ha ha has confidence now. They're, they're playing loose and free. And, and I think the timeout now that Coach Triplett's doing is we don't have to gamble quite as much. We need to be solid, make them shoot shots we want them to shoot, and then keep on being loose and free on, on offense. And uh, 
Their goal is just to make Crestview tighten up a little bit because sometimes when you when the game is easy, like it's been the night for them most of the night, mm -hmm. if it gets tight, then things change a little bit. And so it's very typical of early season basketball, and we, we've seen a very entertaining game tonight. Not always clean, but entertaining. When I say clean, the players will play clean, but just the, mm -hmm. the turnovers and some of those it's, things. It's very early season-like. It has that. Yeah, you, you took the words right out of my, out my mouth. It has that, that uh, early season feel to it. It, but it, and it's not a lack of trying. It's just every team in Northwest Ohio, and I, I, it's a broken record, have had fewer practices based on a lot of different scenarios. See a little pressure applied. Crestview able to break it. They'll set up in the half court. Like our, our coach with us tonight said, now a 10-point game, you defend this a little bit differently as opposed to 15 or 20. They're just being solid right now. Good help inside and threw it away. Get the lob inside. Ren Sheets trying to find someone, throws it away. And he lost his shoe in the, in the process. So he will uh, reattach the footwear and we're good to go. And you see Shawnee's ball move right now. It's just a lot, a lot cleaner, a lot crisper. Their passes are, their cuts are. And, and again, when you, when you make a few shots, it helps. Indians trying to find something. Bucket here. Could be a three. That one's short as it hits the front of the iron. Now Crestview moving in transition. Didn't go quite as fast that time as they have before. As the extra pass along the baseline. High arcing three. Nothing but net. And that was a tough shot. That, I call that a skill shot. That's something he's practiced over and over and over uh, in the summer. And, and that, that's what happens when you do those things. It, it's a lot of hard work. It's not as easy as it looks. A big Matt Tiedegan cooling three-pointer extends this lead back to 13. I'm trying to answer the other end. That one's going to hit the iron. Good offensive rebound by McBride. That one's going to be blocked from behind. And another opportunity from the corner doesn't go. Etzler comes away with a rebound. He's going to be tracked down two Shawnee defenders. Now the paid officials wanted the high dribble call. They'll go inside. Ren Sheets off the window and in. Pushes it back to 15. Runner in the other end doesn't go. A little bit out of control. Now Crestview is going to do the smart thing, slow it down a little bit. And what you've seen here, Randy, the, the Shawnee's last three threes have all been short. You expand that much energy, expend that much energy to get back in the game, mm -hmm. your legs start going. And that's what's happened. Their, their legs are going right now. Etzler, good entry pass inside. Sheets with a turnaround. Doesn't get that one. Two Shawnee players nearly collide going for the rebound. It's out of bounds. Looks like it'll stay with the Indians here. And that was a really good possession by Crestview. Sheets missed that, but that, that's going to fall later on in the year. That, that's an early season miss and, and, and those kind of things. But that's really going to be hard to guard. Uh, you know, it's 6'6 six, six inside, nice little hook, and he just missed it short. See if Shawnee has one more run in them, Randy. Had the opportunity with the ball down 10. Now they find themselves down 15. It's a corner three, and they do have an answer. And that's been their success here. Pick and pop. He screened and then popped back to the corner, and that's been open tonight. Back at Berkey with the bats heating and cooling three. But Crestview just beat Shawnee down the floor. Run Sheets now with double digits. He's got 11. Here's McBride with another match heating and cooling three. He's got a pair of them tonight. And a timeout now 60-49 with 4.14 to go. Sixty forty-nine, Crestview with the lead, 4.14 left to play. Knights had a comfortable 20-point lead at one point. Shawnee's had an answer. Got it down in the single digits once at nine. Every time they do, it seems like the Knights able to stretch that back to about 15. It's never enough to really put the Indians away, but never enough where they've been fully comfortable. And Shawnee just refused to go away. And that, that's a characteristic of Coach Triplett's team. They, they play really hard, and they've done that tonight as well. Ren Sheets now doubled on the baseline, gets rid of it, and a nice lane opens up. 
Is Jared Harding able to score for the first time tonight? Indians trying to come up with an answer here with three and a half minutes to go. McBride gets rid of the basketball. Driving the kick, McBride, corner three, count it. But the third triple of the night, another Matt's heating and cooling three-pointer for McBride. Back to a 10-point lead. Another open look on the other end, that one too strong, Sheets. Comes away with the rebound, the kick out, top of the key, that one no good. Good box out that time, Shawnee comes away with it. Good spin, the move inside, that one left short. Wilson had a look, couldn't fall. And now whistle and a timeout here. So 2.56 left to go in our carry insurance scoreboard. 10 point lead for the Knights. We'll step aside here in WOSN. Oh, once again, coach, Shawnee scratching their way back in. It's seesawed between about 9, 10, and 15. Here we are, 10-point lead for Crestview. That just was under a, three minutes to go. That was a great timeout by Coach Esso. They, they had just jacked up two threes. Now it's a time and score position for Crestview. They're not in the bonus yet, but you're up 10 with 245. you got to get the shot you want or, or have them foul you, but the three isn't what they need right now. That is what looks like Crestview is doing, being a little bit more patient. And as you said, the last couple of trips to look inside and an offensive foul is going to be called as Carson Hunter as we take a look at the replay with a player control foul. And there's been a lot of these block charge calls tonight and, they, and they've made the calls. That's what I'm happy about, really. A lot of times in games there's no call and then players and coaches don't know what to do um, besides get frustrated. So at least, you know, one person's happy in the whole mix and, and you don't always get it right, but, but uh, that was probably a, a good call and uh, Crestview made a good play to, to be aggressive, too, to, on a layup. Third foul for Hunter. Looks like he's banged up a little bit. I see him kind of holding his small of his back. He'll sit down with 2.32 to go. On our scoreboard tonight, sponsored by Carey Insurance and Grover Hill. Proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. You got a four possession game, so they're trying to get that down to that three possession, eventually two possession game, and they're getting closer to it. McBride, he's been the catalyst for the offense tonight. Double clutch on a pass. Coach Triplett sweating that one a little bit. Glad to see ball still in his team's hands. Top of the key three is nothing but net and another timeout taken by the Indians. That three-pointer, Matt's heating and cooling three. And a big bucket there, Brady Gabers with it. So he gets into the scoring column. And uh, now 62-55 with 2.01 to go. I think that's as close as they've been since 8-0. I, I do think, believe so. I think it was 6-0 and 8-0. Mm -hmm. That's as close as they've been uh, since the early for first quarter. And a lot of credit goes to Shawnee for, for hanging in there because this could have been a 30-point game Oh, easily. Easy. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to tell you once again, our three-point sponsor tonight is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the Energy Efficient Zone. Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Still two minutes, plenty of time for Shawnee. And, and uh, Shawnee's now in the bonus, and, and they've still got to, to give three more fouls before the 1-1 one -one for Crestview. So Shawnee can continue to be aggressive to go for the steal first and then eventually foul, but they still got you know three more before the bonus for Crestview. Nate Lickley to do the inbounding. He's got it in, has the basketball back in his hands now. Seen a lot of three-quarter court pressure out of uh, Shawnee. And now there is a foul called, 149 left. And you'd expect the Indians to be a little bit more aggressive on defense. Yeah, they have to be. They, they go for the steal first, and then you can't let too much time go off. You gotta, then you got a foul. Dominic Lynch guilty of the foul. It's going to be his third, and he might have just picked up his fourth right there. So there's two more, and that's going to move the team fouls to six. So both teams are in the bonus from the last minute, 42. 
Might have been the plan the entire time for Shawnee here. Let's see how much time they let should they let to Crestview that is try to run off the clock. And, and Temple and Lickley and that's are all good free throw shooters. So they had, they had three really good shooters out there on the floor um, that have shot a lot of shots for them tonight. Keegan Wilson will commit the foul. It's going to be his third. It is going to send Gavin Etzler to the line to shoot the one and one. And here's a good sign. You just saw him running across your screen there. If you're a Crestview fan, Carson Hunter looked a little banged up on that uh, charge, able to re-enter the ball game. And now Etzler able to get that free throw. That was a shooter's touch roll there. I mean, that looked short, and it kind of just rolled over and went in. And that's a lot of practice right there. Second one, he goes, all right, I've teased everyone enough. How about just the easy swish? Good balance for Crestview tonight, too, as well, Randy. So McBride a little up and under, doesn't get it to go. And now a 2 and one Hunter leading the break. He'll do the smart thing, hold on to the basketball. That looks like a little chase defense. There's the foul with a minute 10 to go. Shawnee knows that Crestview will just run out the final 70 seconds. Still three possession game, but it's it's getting tougher and tougher for every free throw that Crestview makes for Shawnee. They're running out of time now. So Brady Gabers will pick up his third foul. Front end of the one and one is going to be no good as Temple missed the free throw. Indians starting to run out of chances. Though a couple of minutes ago, we're in pretty good shape. Runner doesn't go. Rebounds tipped up. That one's going to be deflected as Ren Sheets has it. Ball's then out of bounds. Official's going to make a call. And they're going to say it's going to belong to Crestview. We take a look at the replay. And you see Sheets had two blocks that possession. And when there's space on a drive, he's going to block it. You have to create contact to try to create the foul situation there. There's, he had space. Good play there by Crestview. Get the ball in Etzler's hands. 64-55 and the foul off the inbound. So Etzler back to the free throw line. Etzler with baskets from either 15 feet or 19 feet. And that's been his two choices tonight. Yeah, there's been, been really good balance from Crestview. They've, they've really overall put a good floor game. They've been in control of the game all the way through. First toss is good. He'll make the front end of the one and one. Pushes it back to double digits now, as you see on our carry insurance scoreboard, 65-55. And that's what you expect a four-year a uh, varsity player to do is make free throws to finish the game and handle the ball, and he's done that. Shawnee trying to get one late push. Here's one up top of the backboard. And the foul looked like Coach Triplett might have called off the dogs there, but the foul committed. Or the outstretched arms just for the defend. I don't know all the coach speak for the I, I don't – he wouldn't call the dogs off yet. I, I mean, his – his kids will keep on playing, but there will become a point in time where you're going to say no Moss. Temple able to get the first free throw. He's had a pretty impressive night. Now at double digits with 10 points. So it looks like four players for Crestview in double digits tonight. A loose ball on the floor, saved by the Indians. Look inside, there's a deflection. Ren Sheets will come away with it. And now that one looked just a slip, and that one looked bad. Yeah. See Gabers, number 24 coming in, just slipped. Saw the leg just kind of give out. And, and again, it's a, it's a hot, humid evening in the gym tonight, and there's been a lot of uh, sweat and different things on the floor. And, um, that's good to see he got up. I, I think it, it probably scared him a little bit, too. So also shook off. He had a couple teammates that were going to help him get to the bench, kind of shook him off. Now it looks like Shawnee's going to go ahead and empty the bench here, 33.3 seconds to go. Yeah, both teams are subbing. It's a mass yeah. uh, sub. And looks like the Knights will do the same thing. It's a very early part of the year, but it looks like Crestview is going to go to 2-0. Shawnee is going to fall to 0-2, a couple of tough losses. So 
Isaac Klein in at the point now for the Knights as they'll just run out this final 30 seconds. And these young men want to get into the scoring column, want to get into that box score in the paper in the morning. Yeah, th th this is always fun to watch. Th these kids practice all week long. They earn a, a chance of time. And again, uh, I don't think Cress is going to shoot it here. I think they're just going to hold and let the clock run out and now. Down to about five seconds. Klein keeps looking up. Everyone on the bench trying to get, it looks like they're trying to get someone positioned for a shot, but they'll just run it out in our final tonight. Here at Exler Gymnasium, Crestview gets the win as the Knights defeat the Shawnee Indians 68 to 55. We'll take a timeout. We've got a few awards to give out. We'll do that when we return here at WOSN. Brayden Roberts, Mark Bagley back with you here at Crestview as we wrap this one up. The uh, Crestview Knights go to 2-0 on the year. The Shawnee will fall to 0-2 as the Knights get a 68-55 win. And Coach, we have uh, one piece of business to take care of, a Stolle Insurance Hustle Award tonight. And I think you and I both kind of agreed during that break, the start that uh, Crestview had, the play that he had on both ends of the floor. Mitch Temple for the Knights, a very deserving award winner this evening. Yeah, Mitch played a solid floor game, both offensively and defensively. Got it out early, made some crucial steals, made some easy buckets, created for his teammates and himself tonight, and just played an outstanding floor game. Well, very quickly, take a look at scoring leaders. Four players in double figures tonight for Crestview. Gavin Etzler leads them with a 16. Mitch Temple, Nate Lickley, and Ren Sheets all have 11. Carson Hunter added nine as well, so he's right there. Will McBride, talk about the play he had, 23 points for the Indians while uh, Beckett Berkey had to play some extended minutes coming off the bench with some uh, players injured. Ends up with a pretty nice night with 12 points. Yeah, and, and give Shawnee credit tonight. They, they had a really poor start. They had a late scratch from their from their leading score from last year coming back and, and had to kind of recalibrate tonight, but they got down by 21 and cut it to 13 and got all the way down to seven and just met, kept on battling. And, and they're gonna get better from this tonight. They'll learn from this. Some role players like Berkey came off the bench and, and it had a nice shooting night tonight. So I think it's a, both teams will grow from this and get better early on this season. And it's going to be a, a, it was a good early season test for both teams. So we want to thank everyone who made our night possible here at uh, Crestview. Uh, understand that Austin Fleming, the AD, a young man you know pretty well. Yeah, Austin is a, a former player of, of ours at Van Wert, a Van Wert graduate, and then really happy for him when he got the job when, and when he came back to Van Wert. And, this job opened up for him, so he does an outstanding job, a great young man, and uh, we're just really proud of Austin. His eyes lit up when I said that uh, you were coming tonight, so he was pretty excited. want to thank Tony and Ken for all the work they do as well, and uh, Coach, it's been a few years, but good to see you again. Thanks for coming over. Randy, a lot of fun tonight. The, the, the crew you have is outstanding. Again, TV44 does a great job promoting high school basketball and making kids feel like all-stars uh, in Northwest Ohio. We, we just love what, what they provide for, for fans and for, for our players and coaches. So once again, you see the final Crestview gets the win over Shawnee 68-55. It's for Mark Bagley and our entire WOSN crew. I'm Brady Roberts. Thanks for watching live high school basketball tonight.